<laughs> recording of her first cooking show ever. I love it. That's and, great. And, <laughs> in the kitchen with Jane. <laughs> but, and, then, and then other days, David. David's the baker in the house, so maybe we'll have to have a yeah baking show. Um, so, do you? Anybody who's cooking should be sure and have out their ingredients already and everybody will move along. So a few, I don't know, a couple months ago, I guess, David and Jane and I were having a FaceTime happy hour catching up and Jane started telling me about how much she loved cooking crepes and how she flips them and all this stuff. And I said, oh my gosh, my Rotary Club had a cooking, um, meeting one day where one of our hobby chefs led us through how to make um, a, a, a recipe. Everybody had the ingredients and we got online. And so I said, you know, Jane, would you be willing to do that? And she said, sure. So I think not only is she going to teach you how to make crepes, she's going to share some British history as she goes along. <laughs> so that'll be a lot of fun. Um, my suggestion is that we all mute unless we have a question and that you do speaker view. Because if you, if you do the speaker view, then you'll be able to see Jane and um, when she's talking and the rest of us will be muted. So we'll see her. And if you have a question, then just unmute yourself and ask your question because I won't be able to see you waving your hand uh, in the limited view. But um, I think that's it. So Jane, take it away. Okay. Oh, and, and your cameraman, David. Yeah, so this is the first time that we've ever worn uh, these Mardi Gras beads. You know, we, we're not, we don't really do that in England. And it's the first time I've worn them along with a, an apron. My apron is the London Underground system for anybody who has been to London. If you'd like to go from King's Cross, St. Pancras, over to Baker Street, this is where you go, straight across my waist. So, <laughs> um, by the way, is the camera okay that way or do you need to turn it horizontal for most people? Is that okay? See what horizontal looks like. I think that's better. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, Dave, the cinematographer, there you go. Right. So, um, European crepes, or as we call them, English pancakes, um, they are a little bit different from, uh, from the US recipe. Um, and they're actually a little bit simpler. Um, there are only flour, milk, and eggs. You can put a little pinch of salt in, but actually I don't, but flour, milk, and eggs, and that's all that goes into them. Um, but before I do that, I'm actually just going to get my filling going um, because um, I want to be able to fill these once they're made. So um, I do enjoy uh, doing pancakes because savory filling for them is, is, is so versatile. I'm going to be doing um, mushrooms, leeks and ham. And so I'm just going to get that going on the back there. Um, but you can put just about any savory thing that you like in, you know, leftovers, um, chicken goes in really well. Um, uh, I tend to fry in olive oil and butter together for it to get a, a, a low smoke point, but that's just me. Um, so I did give some suggestions for fillings. Um, and I'm sure you've got plenty of ideas, um, but uh, I'm just going to get that going behind the scenes. Right, so let's start with our pancakes. Um, first of all, starting with one cup of flour, and then one egg. Um, if I'm making pancakes, this recipe will probably make um, say about seven pancakes, between six and eight. Um, and if I've got a lot of people around, I still tend to only make it in batches of one cup of flour, one egg and the milk, um, rather than try and double it up because you just find it easier to mix. Um, and yes, we compost, so that goes in there. Oops, I've just gone and broken my olive oil. It's gonna be all right. Right. Um, 
So I tend to only make it up in batches of, of, of sort of one cup of flour. Um, just get that going, just make a regular batter mix. Hey Jane, Jane, yes? I got a yes? question. Should our skillets be on? No, okay. no, not yet. So I just get the, the egg in the middle, make a well in the middle, put the egg in the middle and then start adding a bit of milk. How much milk? Now we've got, I've got a cup and a half of milk in there. So the general um, proportions that I use is one cup of flour, one egg, and a cup and a half of milk. So it's all geared around multiples of one egg. So I'm just gonna get my savory filling going in the background. As I said, I'm doing um, leeks and mushrooms with uh, some ham, and then I'll finish it off with a dollop of, of sour cream. I just wanted to just get that going in the background there. Right. So, um, just gradually add the milk in to the middle. Looks pretty doughy at the moment. Plus it will, uh, it will loosen up. So I was looking at U US pancake recipes. I looked at Martha Stewart, the New York Times, and all recipes. And they all have milk, flour, and eggs, but they also have sugar, baking powder, and butter. And some of them have got buttermilk, but butter, baking powder, and, and sugar. Um, this doesn't. This has only got flour, eggs, and milk. And the other thing I noticed about the recipe was that the general proportions for US pancakes are one cup of flour and one cup of milk. So they come up as a much thicker, gloopier batter. What we want here is a thinner batter than that. And you'll see when we, once we start making them why that's a good idea. That's why we've gone for a cup and a half of milk to one cup of flour. Jane, um, this is saying, is that whole milk? Um, my, I use non-fat milk, but um, the one thing about this recipe is it's really forgiving. You can use whole milk, semi-skimmed, skimmed. Um, you can use really large eggs. You can use smaller eggs. Um, there's, it's the, you, you can play around with this recipe and it, and it, and it, it can still come out okay. Um, one thing about flour, um, I use just regular all-purpose flour. Um, if you want gluten-free, I have made them with oat flour, 100% oat flour. Um, they come out a little bit heavier, but if you are gluten intolerant, they'll still work. They're just a slightly heavier texture. Um, and my assistant is just, um, <laughs> he's just uh, sorting out the leaks and, and mushrooms. So, uh, and then it's a pair of hands. And um, one thing I do like about this recipe is I often put, are you still there? Yeah, you're still there. I often put, um, like uh, in, the, in one cup of flour, I'll just take the, uh, the top sort of the top quarter of it and put oat flour in. And the oat flour gives it a nice nutty taste, but I won't use whole oat flour. I, I like to have some, some flour with gluten. Right, so there we have a cup and a half of uh, milk, a cup of flour and one egg. Um, so in terms of consistency, um, this should be, fairly runny. As I say, you've got a cup and a half of milk in there, so it, it's a, quite a bit runnier than you would see for an American mixture. But, so when I'm doing the Saturday breakfast, I like to do the pancakes on the griddle and you pour it out and it sort of goes out and, and forms like a, a gloopy blob because um, the, the, the batter is a lot thicker. But we want, we want this to be a little bit runnier. And that's it. And um, just mix it until you uh, until you get back. Nothing else to do with it. 
So um, I will wait a couple of minutes for everybody to finish making their batter. And while we do that, for those who are just like coming along for the ride, um, I've got my old cookbook out. This is my good housekeeping cookbook that I got when I was 16 years old. Um, and recipe here for pa pancakes, batter, baked batter puddings and Yorkshire puddings, which is a whole different story, which we won't get into right now. Um, you need four ounces of plain flour, at one egg and half a pint of milk. And um, it's really interesting. One of the things when I came to the US is that um, I really struggle with recipes because recipes in the UK are all done by weight. You weigh your ingredients out, you weigh out four ounces of flour. Um, and so to be told a cup of flour, I actually wasn't sure how much was in a cup. Is it just a regular coffee mug or, or what? Um, so I, it's an interest, I just, I struggled with that when I first turned up. Um, but um, I have to say that now I really enjoy cooking by cups. It's so much easier. It's just get a cup of this, but the done. But this recipe, it's really quite sweet. It says, mix the flour, make a well in the center and break in the egg, add half the liquid and gradually work in the flour using a wooden spoon, right? And then it says, add in the remaining liquid. And the last line of the recipe says, the batter may also be beaten with an egg wix or electric mixer. So I think things have moved on since 1976. But anyway, I thought that was quite interesting. Um, another thing about pancakes um, is that in England, we all grew up with the only filling we ever had was uh, lemon juice and sugar. And in this recipe here, there it says pancakes, you need your pouring batter, they cooked them in lard, which we are not cooking in lard. And then it says castor sugar and lemon. That's all it says, it actually says that in the cookbook. Jane. Jane. <laughs> Gillian's on the screen with yes. a tin of golden okay, syrup. Okay, look, this is, what, this is what I have, golden syrup and lemon juice. Perfect. Oh, lovely, lovely. That'll be perfect. <laughs> Right, okay, so hopefully everybody's got their, uh, their batter ready. I am just pausing for a bit of chef's tipple, another essential ingredient in the kitchen. <laughs> so there we go, and I'm going to put my beads behind my behind the London tube mat. Right, okay, time to get your skillets going. I have a pan, I have a crepe pan, um, just because I brought this over from England. This is actually iron, it's not cast iron, but it's iron and it isn't, there's no non-stick on it either. And um, so that's, that's that pan. Um, I've also got just my regular small frying pan going as well. So I'm going to put both on together just so I can get lots of pancakes going. Jane, about how, how big are your pans about? How big are your pans? Um, I would say they're about eight inches. This is about eight inches. Maybe okay. <laughs> so this is um, a crepe pan that my, my sister bought me. This one is nearly 12 inches. I don't like this pan, it's just too big. I just think this entire space is just too big. Um, so I'm not that keen on that, but if I really need to and I have to get three lots of pancakes going at one time, then I will use this pan. Um, but I, I typically, I don't use this pan. Right, oil. Let's talk about oil. Um, I would use, usually I, I, you, you need to like, if you've got a, um, an oil with a high smoke point like canola or grapeseed, it, is, it, it, it certainly helps. Um, I try, or even just vegetable oil, I try not to use olive oil because it, its smoke point is quite low. I would have used canola oil, except for some reason, I, I didn't quite assess how much canola oil I still had left in the jar. So we're actually going with grapeseed oil. But it Jane, is a, it's another high smoke point one. Jane, how, like what temperature do you have your um, pans at? I. They're full on right they're now. They're full on. You want, you want to have a, a very hot pan and you want very, very little oil. You basically want to show it the oil bottle and no more, really. Um, just a little bit to coat the bottom. Um, 
Now, if there's kids around, I don't do this because um, I did this with a, a, when a family came to stay one time and I did this and then the 11 year old girl did it and she burned herself. And so I decided, oh, but I kind of do a quick jump, jump, jump. So I'm just giving it sort of show it the oil. But we, I really need this to get really hot till, till it's beginning to smoke. Um, so really one of the real secrets to this is to have your pan, to have it very hot, um, really to the point of smoking. The reason I like my um, cast iron pan is that it gets hotter than the non-stick. I don't know why that is, but it just is. Um, so this is pretty much getting there now. Right, okay. So, and in terms of, of um, having uh, runnier batter, what we're aiming for is a very flat thin pancake. Remember, we've got no baking powder. There's no, there's no leavening agents in this. It's going to be a very thin, it's almost like a tortilla, except it doesn't have the stiffness of a tortilla. Right, so this is beginning to smoke. So I'm just going to take it off the heat slightly. So I'm going to turn it down to sort of, uh, down to sort of three quarters. Now I'm using a one third cup measure, just because it's the size which suits my pan best. Get the, get the, the uh, batter in there and then just shake it around so that it'll run round to the edges. Let's get the other one going. Right. Okay, so we're off to the races. So, is there a question? I think one of the things that people get really worried about is if they're going to stick. When you start out, of course, they got they, they you know they they feel very um, stuck, and that's because they're wet underneath. And as they as they cook, and they'll only take you know. A, 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 a minute or two to cook at the most, then once they dry off on the bottom, they'll start to move. So there you go, that one's moving already. So just give it a bit of encouragement around the sides. Right, so they're dry underneath. So they're, they're already cooked underneath. Right, now this is what we did as kids. Oh, this is what you're in, in England all told. And we'll, I'll show you some more of this later, but we're gonna flip the pancakes. I mean, why, why just get the mix, why just get the thing out and flip them over? I mean, that's really, really boring, yeah? I mean, it's just, there's no, there's no point doing that. So what we're gonna do is flip it. So it's moving and you just flip up and round. Except I flipped too far. There we go. <laughs> to flip it over once. Whoa, there we go. Right, <laughs> okay. And actually, if you look at the difference in these two pans, you can see how much more baked underneath or cooked underneath the iron one is compared to the non-stick. We're gonna leave the non-stick one a, a little bit longer. Basically, when once you've cooked it, once it will cook underneath and we pretty much cook all the way through. All we're really doing at this stage is, is cooking it so it'll, it'll brown on the bottom a little bit so it doesn't look like just pale and white. Um, but that pretty much is it. Now I'm going to put the oven on. Um, so my big oven is on the fritz at the moment. So although this look, this is my microwave, it's on convection at the moment. We're not microwaving our pancakes, just so we know. And basically you can pile them up in a big pile and stick them in the oven uh, to keep warm and they'll keep warm for ages and they won't deteriorate. So it means you can make quite a lot of pancakes and, and they'll still taste hot. Right, um, I would have got this out like a Jane, minute ago. What, what, what okay, temperature right? is the oven at? Oh, I just put this on 180 just so it's, just so it's warmed through. It's like a warming drawer, you know, because they're not cooking, they're just keeping warm. So that's on at 180. So at this moment, remember the idea is to keep the pan hot. 
So I've only just taken this slightly off the heat. Um, it's, it, it don't, you need to be bold and be prepared to keep the heat high. So I only add like, like, I don't know, half a teaspoon of oil, if that, just enough to just coat the bottom. Right, and then off we go again. So in with a third of the batter. Jump it round really quickly when it hits the pan or else, or else you'll just get really funny lines where it will uh, set and then move out. Uh, but that's why you need a running, a running a mix, runnier mixture so they will, they will run and spread. What about if it's totally stuck? <laughs> ah. That's what I have. Totally it's, stuck. It's totally stuck. <laughs> um, then just get your spatula and scrape it out and start again. <laughs> um, I would say make sure you've got enough oil in the pan, but it, not so you fry it. Okay. Um, but if, if, if it's a non-stick pan, it should be, it should be okay. Yeah. So I'm just, just, just doing enough to, to, to coat the bottom there. Right, ready to flip this one. I'm gonna get some batter in this one. We'll flip this one. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I would just like to point out that that one ended up on the floor. <laughs> party foul, Jane, party foul. <laughs> well, you know, as kids, if you didn't have one landing on the floor, you really hadn't worked hard at Done enough, worked hard enough at slipping your pancakes. So there's always a dud with pancakes. <laughs> so I'm taking some pancakes around to Brenda. I'd just like to know, Brenda, that's not going to you. Okay, that's that's not going on a plate. Don't worry. Right, okay. So let's get this going and this. So I mean it it does start out by looking a bit stuck so you just get your spatula and just kind of work it round a bit yeah and then eventually it will it should shift now this is a bit i put a little bit much in this because you can see i don't know if you can see that this is cooked because it's got bubbles coming up and this isn't it's it's still got like the liquid on the top so we need to just give that a little bit longer okay just kind of um just give, give them a little bit of encouragement around the edge. But when they start to move, then they are cooked. Right, okay. Yay. Now, <laughs> Jake, wasn't there nice, something so. about running around the island three times as you flipped it? Right, well, we'll talk about pancake roasts in a moment when I finish okay. these two. The other thing then is to look at um, how we, what, how we, how suggestions on how to eat them. I think it's so common in the US that because the pancakes are thick, you think of toppings. Whereas the objective of these is to have something that's more like a tortilla. So um, what we do is we put filling down the middle and fold and, and then roll it up. Um, it doesn't quite have the firmness of a tortilla, so I'd, um, it's not easy, to, it's not really for picking up. We tend to eat them with a knife and fork, um, but uh, it does mean that um, you are putting using a filling and not a topping. And again, um, I'm, I, I even eat pizza with a knife and fork, so I'm, I'm, a, little bit, I'm a little bit off that way. So um, when we first arrived in the US and we lived in the Bay Area, the first thing we did was we joined the choir of the local Episcopal church and they had a choir retreat. Like first thing, we'd only been there, you know, we'd only been in, in town, uh, lived there about three weeks and we went to choir retreat. And they brought in a Kentucky Fried Chicken dinner, which was Kentucky Fried Chicken and mashed potatoes and coleslaw and 
red things and um, a new kind of like new paper plates and plastic knives and forks. And um, so Dave and I, we got our chicken and, and uh, some mashed potato and, and coleslaw. And then I proceeded to, both of us actually, started to eat our chicken with our plastic knife and fork because we were just not brought up to pick food up in England. And we gradually noticed that the entire table of 18 people had stopped to watch. Um, but this was quite remarkable that they used their knife and fork to spread the butter, but now to spread butter on the bread and the fork to eat the coleslaw and everything else was with the fingers. So it was a, a good cultural introduction. Uh, but I still eat my pan I still eat my pancakes with uh, an knife and fork because they, they don't really they're not that they're not really quite as firm as a tortilla. Right. There you are, Kathleen. See, even I have a bit that sticks now and then. Just to make you feel better. Right. Okay. So. So another thing. Um. I'm getting a bit low on mixture here as well, so probably put that one there, and then I'll probably put all of that into that into that pan as my last pancake. So here's what happens if you put your if you put your pancake mixture in, you don't jump it down fast enough. It gets all like bumpy. It's all like um, uh, got like ripples on it. It's not smooth. So that's what can happen. And the other thing, actually, Kathleen, I think, is if your mixture goes too far up the side of the pan, it gets really, really thin. Um, and that does tend to just stick a bit. So that, that is maybe what happened to yours. But just be a bit brutal with it and just get your spatula and just try it. Out. Right. Okay. So. Right, pancake races. So um, it really is true that in England, you only have to Google UK pancake races. And in all sorts of villages up and down the country, they will run down the village street or across the village green, tossing pancakes. It's, it's, on the, it's, it's strange but true. But the British are really as a nation with, with, we like decorum, you know, we don't like to, make ourselves look stupid. And then we just throw caution to the wind and run up and down the, the high street with a pan and a pancake. I mean, what's with that, you know? What's with that? So um, I've got some film on, uh, I found some film on YouTube of um, in the city of London, which is the financial capital of Europe. Well, until Brexit, but yes. Um, Full of um, extremely important looking people who dress up and run, run around London, the, 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 uh, a, a square in London with pancakes. So I'm doing this just to show you the evidence that this really is true. There they are getting all dressed up. These are the different livery companies in London. So they're all wearing their, their posh uh, cloaks and things. And uh, oops, there we go. They really are running around up and down. And they have to stop at they have to stop at the bollards and toss the pancake. I mean, really, it's, it's um, bizarre. If you hadn't seen it with your own eyes, you really wouldn't believe it, would you? But there you go. That's awesome, Jane. <laughs> oh my gosh. And there is a whole raft of of pancake races on YouTube. Right, so in the meantime, I flip this one over with the spatula all sort of quiet behind the scenes. Right, so how many have we got? 
Seven minutes. Um, and then the one I the one I trashed. Right. Okay. So um, you're going to assemble the pancakes. Um, So I suggest that you, so this is also, it shows you the difference. This is, this is the, this was the top. This was the bottom that we cooked and then we flipped it over and we just a bit to brown it. That's all, that's all you really need to do. Um, so I'm gonna finish this off with a bit of sour cream. The other one, well, my other favorite topping is um, a really good uh, plain, uh, a plain yogurt um, with a really good honey and um, walnuts. And the reason we like that so much is that um, we were on holiday in the Greek islands and we were in a taverna for breakfast right down by the harbor. And you can't really understand the menu because it's all in Greek. It really is in Greek, but we can't even read. And, um, and lo and behold, they came out with these pancakes. And um, it was fresh honey from the hillsides. So it's incredibly fragrant. Fresh Greek yogurt from the dairy just down the road. Fresh walnuts. And I think walnuts, when they're really fresh, they're not, they don't go, they're not bitter. They just really just gorgeous texture and from now on ever since then um yogurt honey and walnuts is kind of one of my one of my you know go-to uh go-to fillings right so here we are um leeks mushrooms and ham so i just put a bit down the middle and actually i'm going to use my fingers because dave's going to eat this one Oh, am I? Yeah. So there we go. Just roll it up. <laughs> and there you go. End of story. Right. So we've got this all done in 35 minutes. So you have, your in, we've talked about the ingredients. We've talked about keeping the pan hot. We've talked about tiny, tiny bit of oil, getting it to the smoke point. So you can just start to see the smoke come off it. Drop the heat down very slightly at that point, but keep it hot. Um, I use a third of a cup as a measure to put in there, put it in, swill it round so you get a nice flat pancake, cook it for what, a minute, minute and a half until it's, until it moves around the pan. Like this. And then. Oh yes. Look. Then, exactly like that, Gillian. <laughs> exactly like that. And Gillian can attest that we do flip pancakes in England. And then give it a go. You can use a spatula. Nobody's watching. Okay. Nobody's watching. Um, um put, put them in the oven they will keep warm for ages um and then uh, so i'm drinking opalo thanks to jim and nancy mcclennan's recommendation about opalo winery we did buy opalo wine um but i am i am done so any, any more questions awesome thanks. job jane yeah thank you so much so fun that was awesome, awesome. that's great do we have some somebody to tell us what was the Good question? Job. Does anyone want to share their pancakes? How is it going? Are we cooking away out there? Yes, we are. I have yes. I have a chicken um, pot pie pancake. So oh, I made the nice. filling like a chicken pot pie and I put it in the crepe. Yum. Does oh, drinking yes. wine count as participation? Yeah. <laughs> I hope so, because that's what I'm doing. And here are mine. Bye. I've stacked them up. <laughs> Ooh, I'm oh, going to try and toss this one. Okay. Oh, nice. Good job. Good girl. I've tossed most it. of them. Jillian, what are you putting on yours? Are Golden you syrup and lemon juice. juice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. And Betsy, what are you putting in yours? Um, mushroom leeks with chicken and a bechamel sauce. Nice. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Jane. Bye. 
Bye, Bye Leanne. Bye, Bye. Leanne, what are you working on in your home? We're doing sweet. So we have strawberries oh. and Grand Marnier with whipped cream and chocolate chips. Oh, 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 my God. That sounds yeah. great. You can come here next year. <laughs> bring bring oh, the Grand Marnier. You don't want the stuff on the top? That sounds great. Jane. Yeah. Jane, Julia Child would be proud. I know. Yeah, she would. <laughs> you need your sh own show. This was fabulous. You are just Thank spectacular. You. I hope you had a good time. So awesome, awesome job. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thanks, Jane. And we yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've got pancakes to deliver to Brenda now. So Brenda's good. getting leeks, ham, and mushroom with sour cream. And so they'll be with you in about 10 minutes, Brenda. Yeah. Wonderful. So I my front door is unlocked. If you just <laughs> slide them into the little table inside the front door, then I won't have to roll out to the delivery spot that's marked. Right, <laughs> roll away. Okay. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. Right. This was Thank great. You. Thanks, Jane. Cheers, bye. bye. Wonderful, thank you. Bye. Bye.